Hi guys, in this video we're going to be discussing scalars and vectors. We'll look at some everyday examples representing vectors and we'll finish with a summary. It turns out that all physical quantities can be categorised as either a scalar or a vector. And when we talk about physical quantities, what we're talking about is the things that we can measure. For example, the speed and direction that a car is moving. Or as another example, we can measure things like the temperature. So what is the difference between these two categories, scalars and vectors? Well, a scalar is anything that has just a magnitude. And a good example of a scalar quantity is the mass of an object. The mass can be described by just a number. In particular, mass is given by just the number of kilograms. And you might be tempted at this point to think, well, isn't everything just a scalar? We can measure anything and give it a number. But it turns out that some things are what are called vectors. And vectors are things which have both a magnitude and a direction. So let's think of something physical that needs a vector to describe it. And one example that comes to mind is if we want to describe how a car is moving. It's all very well to say something like, oh, the car is moving at 30 metres per second. But the other thing that we need to fully describe how the car is moving is to say which direction it's going in. Now, we could describe the direction the car is moving by the direction of an arrow that we drew. So the direction of this arrow gives us the direction of the vector, and then the magnitude of a vector is given by a number. Now a convenient way to describe the direction of a vector is to give a bearing and a fixed point. Let's see how this works. We'll start with the fixed point which just labels where the object currently is. And then to describe the direction we just need to give an angle with respect to a vertical line. For example, the bearing of this vector would be this angle here. Now let's look at some everyday examples of scalars and vectors. We have actually come across many examples of scalars and vectors without even realising. So what is the difference, for example, between a distance and a displacement? So let's flesh out what's happening here. Let's imagine that I wanted to get from point 1 to point 2. And let's imagine that I got from point 1 to point 2 by taking this red wiggly path. In that case, we would say that the distance that I had travelled would be the length of the total path that I travelled along. And this can be represented by a number, it's just a scalar. Each time I take another step forward, I just increase the amount of distance that I've walked. And it doesn't matter whether I walk backwards or forwards, I still increase the amount of distance I've walked. So we've covered the word distance, but what about the word displacement? Well, when we talk about displacement, what we mean is where did we end up in relation to where we started? So the point here is that the displacement does not care about the path you took. The displacement is just a measure of the distance between your starting point and your finishing point. And we can see from the picture that the distance and the displacement are two very different things. And notice also that if we really wanted to tell someone where we ended up in relation to where we started, then we would need to tell them the direction. For example, if I was trying to explain to someone that I went from point one to point two, and I said to them, oh, I started at point one, and then I went 10 meters, then they could be led to believe that I had moved maybe 10 meters to the left, or 10 meters up, or 10 meters down. To fully describe that I went to point two, I need to say, I went 10 metres to the right, so I need to give a direction. So the displacement is actually a distance in a given direction, and therefore it's what we would call a vector. Now let's look at another example and talk about the difference between speed and velocity. Well, speed is how fast something is travelling. It's a scalar. And it's a scalar because you can just describe it by a number. You could say, I was going at 15 metres per second or 20 metres per second, and that tells you everything about the speed. The velocity, on the other hand, gives us a bit more information. It tells us how fast something is moving in a certain direction, and it is therefore a vector. 
and that's because it has a magnitude or size, that is how fast it is, and it has a direction. Let's take a look at a final example now and talk about the difference between mass and weight, which is something that we could typically confuse as being the same thing, but they're not. The mass is just how heavy something is, and it's a scalar. It can be described by a single number. So mass is essentially a measure of just how much stuff there is in something. For example, you would put a mass on a scale and it would tell you, ah, it has 54 kilograms of stuff. Weight, on the other hand, has a direction associated with it. And this is because weight is the force due to gravity acting on the mass and pulling it towards the Earth. And this is therefore a vector. So in this picture, for example, if we want to draw the force that's acting on the mass, then we need to use an arrow. And we call this force the weight, and therefore weight is a vector. Now let's just expand a bit more on how it is that we really represent vectors. Well, we know that we represent vectors using arrows. And each of these arrows, for example, represent different vectors because they point in different directions. So the direction of the arrow represents the direction of the vector, but also the length of the arrow is used to represent the magnitude of the vector. That is the size of the vector. For example, the bottom arrow represents a vector that has a much larger size or magnitude than the top arrow. We know that the direction the arrow points in represents the direction of the vector. Let's now take a look at an example of two cars with two different velocities and see how the arrows that represent their vectors look. Let's imagine we have one car travelling at a bearing of 80 degrees and at double the speed of another car which is travelling at a bearing of 20 degrees. This would be shown in the following way. The car on the left is a car with a velocity whose bearing is 80 degrees. And the car on the right has a velocity with a bearing of 20 degrees. And then to show that the car travelling with a bearing of 80 degrees has double the speed of the other car, we have drawn an arrow that has double the length of the other car. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE Physics and Combined Science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the SnapRevise smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.